And our next speaker starts with a bold claim. He says, there is no democracy without media literacy. We had a series of talks before on this stage today um, about threats to freedom of press. And I think um, Jaroslaw Lipicki from the Modern Poland Foundation, who is an activist, oh, sorry, Lipczyk. What is your name? I'm sorry. Can you, can you pronounce Lipschitz. it? Lipschitz. My Lipschitz. name is Lipschitz. Lipschitz. Please applaud. Welcome Jar Jaroslav Lipschitz on stage. So, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Jaroslav Lipschitz. I come from Warsaw, Poland, uh, not far, far away from here. And, uh, and uh, yes, I would like to talk about freedom of speech and I would like to talk about war. Uh, because uh, because um, who, thinks that, uh, who thinks that right now uh, his country is in a state of war? Not many people, like no one. And the problem, the problem with you, with all of you, Uh, is that you are wrong <laughs> because um, there are countries which think otherwise and uh, currently such a country is Russia. Uh, currently such a country is Russia which is conducting an information war on, a, on an unprecedented scale. And uh, the problem we are all having is uh, that uh, this thing is not uh, widely reported and it's not being discussed and uh, it's not being analyzed and, uh, and uh, because of that we cannot really defend ourselves in, uh, in the information uh, war. Um, so, in uh, March 2014, just two months ago, a Polish edition of Newsweek magazine Uh, found out something really strange happening on the web forums uh, run by the magazine. They found out that uh, there is a sudden influx after the annexation of Crimea uh, by Russia, um, sudden influx of pro-Russian comments uh, uh, in the, in the, in the, on, on the forums. And uh, they started to analyze the, 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 the server logs And they found out that the most of the pro-Russian comments doesn't come from Poland. And uh, in fact, uh, those comments come from all over the world, except Russia. They also found out that, um, um, that uh, uh, you can find the clues about the, origi the, the place of uh, origin of those comments. Uh, because they use almost perfect Polish language, but not perfect. You could see that they are written by someone for whom Polish is a second language, or by a bot, uh, or they, will, they were automatically translated. Uh, those comments were usually much longer than genuine comments written by users of, uh, of, um, uh, from Poland. Uh, they were longer and much better written, in fact. Uh, and uh, they had a strange uh, pattern of alternating the very reasonable comments, like pro-Russia politics, alternating with a pure hate speech. In this way, the trolls, took over the forums and suppressed the discussion on the topic. Um, so so uh, we could have uh, some doubts about uh, how these comments um, were posted, but we don't because in uh, September 2013, Uh, one um, one, uh, uh, one uh, 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 activist, obviously, um, uh, uh, was looking for a job, and she uh, she and she uh, get in St. Petersburg to the to the to the to the office of business, uh, which was uh, actually working for Russian government, and uh, and uh, what they did was posting comments 
In that time, in September 2013, that was comments on Navalny, uh, which is uh, uh, the main opposition leader in Russia. And this was their task. And uh, so we know how it works. They are well organized, they work for government, they are being paid uh, some 800 euro per month, and the average and the average amount of comments posted by the people employed uh, in that business is uh, 100 comments per day. So, um, so if you think that Germany is an exception, you are wrong. And uh, this is the uh, this is something which was posted accidentally on Twitter. Um, and uh, this is and um, uh, this is the official. Uh, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a it's a it's a comment on how to how to how to uh, how to how to comment the Spiegel uh, article, um, uh, and uh, and uh, and uh, so I don't know German. I couldn't review it, but I'm sure if you look closely at the fo web forums in German language, you will find exactly the same what we have found in Poland or what the Guardian found in United Kingdom because it works everywhere and no European country is an exception. Um, so uh, so w this is a well-organized activity and uh, and uh, the first detailed report we do have comes uh, from uh, 2012, actually, uh, when uh, the, the Russian newspaper Commerzant published an, uh, an article based on the leaks of the emails which, was pub which were published on the web by someone who was calling himself anonymous, surprisingly. And um, and uh, uh, those those were emails of the of the of the chief uh, chief people of the uh, of the Nashi, which is the youth organization of Putin of Putin political party. And in that time, in 2012, the uh, the activists were being paid 85 rubles per comment. That was um, uh, that was uh, uh, 2012. So and. And what I'm talking about is just a, just a one one small part of the information war, uh, which is um, um, uh, uh, which is happening right uh, right now. And um, uh, and don't make uh, and don't make mistake. This is war. Um, the, the the famous saying of uh, Clausewitz uh, was that the war is the continuation of politic by other means the uh, the information war is uh, uh, the information war is being played on uh, at very different levels uh, it's uh, whitewashing the politics of uh, Russia by by prominent politicians or ex politicians who actually uh, took positions in um, in uh, in Russian uh, gas companies or um, and uh, and uh, 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 and so on and so on and so on, and it's also official media. In fact, probably most of that war, we would uh, we would uh, classify as something which is fully fully com fully compliant with our legal system. This war is legal, uh, but it is the war, and it's not new. It's not it's not new. Um, the KGB, which is um, uh, 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 which is the grandfather, the father of FSB, was using exactly these tactics uh, for years during Soviet times. And you can go to the web and uh, search for the video of uh, uh, of uh, uh, of Yuri uh, Bezmenne, which was uh, uh, which was uh, famous uh, KGB defector, uh, called the art of subversion. How to how to create conflict in areas where there is none? How to use tools of communication of mass communication to make people change their minds? And how to use it in a well organized way in order to uh, in order to forward the national interest of some country or the the interest of people who think that who are in church? So. 
So, we have a problem. Because the freedom of speech is a crucial element of our democratic system. Uh, in democratic system, we rely on freedom of speech. Because democracy is all about mediation. It's about, uh, uh, it's about taking all points of view into account. It's about compromise, uh, which is being reached through the discussion. Uh, and uh, this is true today in the networked world, uh, even more than it was uh, in the old days. Uh, but the right to speak freely uh, is something we really do need to constantly defend. And in the information war, in a way it's being uh, run by Russia right now, is something very contradictory to the freedom of speech. Uh, the modus operandi of the enemies of freedom of speech has changed and adapted. In, a, in, a, in, a, in the old days, it was censorship in the a, in a, in a age of the printing press. The censorship was effective way of suppressing the freedom of speech. In mass media era, it was propaganda. And, uh, and, uh, and now this is something completely new. This is something completely new. It's a special operation and, uh, and uh, uh, in an information network um, which is, um, uh, which is um, uh, being done in a completely new way. And we don't know yet how to defend ourselves uh, 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 from such a threat. So, so we do need to defend ourselves and uh, some of the some of the radical ideas being proposed in Poland in talks between people also in people in power uh, was that we need to somehow centralize control on the internet in order to stop the 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 the, the, the special forces of Russia to influence the public opinion in a damaging way. Uh, this is a really dangerous idea. It's like, um, it's like fighting uh, one evil with another evil. So we, we, we do need uh, the tools for control of the, inform of the communication channels. And this is something which was being discussed in, uh, in, uh, in this venue for the past two days. And we, we, we know the answers. We need the control over the information it's infrastructure. We need the control and, uh, uh, over, over the cables. We need the control over the services. And uh, we need privacy because uh, obviously we cannot exercise the freedom of speech if we are being constantly monitored and, and uh, in a world where every our move uh, and every our word is being recorded and stored forever. There is no freedom of speech. We need anonymity because without uh, the right to speak anonymously, we cannot really speak what we have on our minds. Uh, there was a great, uh, there was a great uh, uh, case in uh, the highest court of United States in a, in a case McIntyre versus Ohio Election Board, and the court uh, decided in favor of the right to anonymous speech, saying that anonymity is the shield to protect minority from oppressive majority. So, so. So we need those hard tools, but in an information world, uh, war, this is not enough. Uh, because the information war is war against our minds, and thus our minds are our only defense in information war. So we need to know, we need to understand, we need to be able to critically observe what's happening and uh, we need to know how to react to it. And uh, in other way, this is all about media literacy. Uh, so media literacy is an umbrella term which was uh, being discussed for the last uh, 
10 years and it took its, its place in a very important document of European Union or UNESCO and so on and so on and probably in your country as well but uh, very rarely uh, those bodies uh, those bodies uh, took an effort to actually define what is media literacy, what kind of competences we need in order to survive in an information war. And it's not about Russia, really. It's, all, it's about everyone. Of course, Russia is just an extreme example, uh, but uh, it's actually about survival in an information society. So, 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 when we in, uh, in our organization uh, focused on media literacy and decided to run a program, we be began to look for documents who would tell us, okay, so what we need to teach, what we need to teach to, to the kids in school. And we found nothing. What we did, we, de we decided to to, 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 to write down the standards for media literacy. We created the media literacy catalog, which you can find on this web page. And uh, it was developed by some 50 experts. And, uh, and um, we decided to write it down uh, for different levels of education and for different areas of, uh, of uh, of interest. Those are the main areas of uh, what we think, what we think uh, is, uh, uh, is important in media literacy. The use of information, relations between people in media, language of the media, because uh, you probably know the, the, the famous uh, Marshall McLuhan saying that, uh, that medium is a message. So the language of media, creative use of media, something new, Ethics and values very important because uh, because this is this is how they want to divide us. Safety, law, economy, and digital education is something which is usually being taught in schools. Just you know the the technical part of the co of the of the competences to use to use um, uh, communication technologies. So this is how it looks in practice. It's just a very long table. Some. 100 pages like that, and um, and it's written down to to to, to different um, uh, to different uh, levels of education and also for lifelong learning. Uh, we published uh, the, 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 this document also in uh, Russia, because uh, as it turns out, in uh, post-Soviet space there is a great deal of interest in media literacy, and. Uh, uh, we've been showcasing it, uh, for example, last year in the Ukrainian Crimea, still Ukrainian back then, uh, for the, on the conference for teachers from all over the, uh, the post-Soviet countries, including, um, uh, including, uh, including Russia. And um, based on that, we decided to run in Poland a project uh, of educational resources. We engage NGOs and public institutions to use educational materials we create and, uh, to, the, and to run programs for kids of different age and uh, for adults as well. Um, and uh, this is something which is developing um, um, really quickly. So, uh, and I think, I strongly believe that you really need to take care of media literacy uh, 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 as well. Because, um, because these kind of tensions um, uh, 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 we are observing right now, uh, I believe only our own competences uh, can help us defend ourselves. And uh, this is something we all rely on. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you a lot for your talk. Yeah, Oslav, I think we have some minutes, some more minutes um, for questions from the audience. And I already see there are some questions. 
Uh, hello, Sebastian. My name. Um, uh, I, I put the question um, yesterday already to an, another talk where we talked about uh, the Ukraine-Russian uh, conflict uh, at the moment, and um, my question was: there was this, there are some really high, well-made videos there, um, which uh, uh, which are a supercut of uh, things that pro-Ukraine people have done in Ukraine, and I think it's. It's really made very professional. It's like with, with super music, super cuts. It it's, looks like no normal user can do it. It looks like if there is a, a big person behind it. And, um, but it's really extremely well shared in Germany. It has like 5,000 or more shares on a Facebook page here in Germany. And uh, I think what you're demanding is, is on the one hand right, but I'm a little bit skeptical if this uh, media literacy is, uh, is it really realistic that we can teach so many people uh, to, to really real life that kind of uh, professional videos and that they can think about, okay, who's made this, who spreads this, who finances, uh, you know, like is it realistic that we can teach this to so many people or do we need more journalists who can say, okay, look, here there is propaganda ongoing and that's and that's why. So, in the beginning of the 19th century, probably the same was said about uh, uh, teaching people how to read, right? Uh, if we cannot uh, teach the people how to use media, how to understand media, how to read media, we are doomed. And... Um, um, or we need to rely on a centralized censorship to defend the integrity of our societies. Um, so uh, I choose the first, obviously. Um, it's um, because, um, because, because if we go the other way, then we, we surrender the freedom of speech, and if we surrender the freedom of speech, we surrender democracy. And I strongly believe in democracy. Um, so, 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 yeah. Uh, in every in every message, you need to, you need to understand not only what the message says, but also who is writing and why is he writing or she uh, uh, to understand the meaning. And uh, this is something very basic in a media literacy uh, uh, program. To, to to check to take check the origins of the message to check is it a uh, is it a Wikipedia or is it a university web page is it um, and and so on and so on and so on and uh, we just uh, and it's not only about you know the political opinion it's true for every single activity if you repair cars you really need to know where the, the, where, where the instructions come from. Uh, so, uh, so, so I, I think media literacy is pretty much universal and pretty basic. And this is why we start the media lit competences catalog uh, from preschool, actually, from kindergarten. And then we go through primary school to secondary school to university. Um. Question. So I had a question. Um, it's related to, I can't hear myself. Um, it's related to literacy. Um, I've heard a lot of talk here about concern of government oversight of data, and yet that oversight is, you know, the people that do that work are, you know, part of a military complex that in a democratic society is controlled by politicians, and politicians in turn are elected by the people. And then I just stopped for a minute and looked at the demographic numbers over the last years in the United States, where the lowest number of voters are young people, and it very progressively gets higher and higher percentage of voter turnout the older you get. And so what's the role of active participation in democracy um, as, as part of your view of this? I don't have... I don't have easy, easy answer for that. Um, obviously, and it's true for most of the countries, uh, the youth is underrepresented in the political system because uh, 
Um, and uh, I also think it's somewhat natural. I mean, uh, uh, the best evidence is anecdotal evidence, right? So I myself turned to policy, policy, uh, not politics, when I was uh, well after my, 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 my 30s. And I was really not interested in anything even remotely connected to politics or policy before that time. Why? Because now I have a kid and, you know, I'm, I'm probably more responsible and I'm looking at the future, you know, in a more constructive and reasonable way. And now I know that this is the only world I live in and I need to take care about this world. This is, I mean, so, so from my perspective, personal perspective, this is somewhat natural. Uh, do we have an answer for that? No. Do we know how to engage young people in politics or policy? Not really. How many NGOs in Germany is working on that right now? I mean, hundreds or thousands, yeah. So, so, um, but I don't think it's also you know, that much of the problem. I, uh, because, um, uh, uh, because because we have more serious problems right now how how to defend the basic the basic infrastructure of our communication uh, how to how to how to defend civic society in in a world uh, uh, which is uh, be, being teared apart and uh, where new forces are trying to uh, uh, to, 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 to to conflict us so so yeah Okay, the last question. I fear our time is running up. Hi, thank you for the talk. Could you talk a bit about the educational system, the schools and universities? Are they actually interested in media literacy or is it just lip service? So, we are moving forward. Uh, we are moving forward. Um, last year, the Ministry of Education announced digital school program in Poland. And part of that... Uh, and part of that program is uh, actually teaching all the teachers, 600,000 teachers, uh, the competences to use technology. Um, uh, it's difficult discussion because the because because the entrenched way of teaching technology is uh, teaching how to use Microsoft uh, Office, and uh, and. Uh, Teachers are also a very conservative group of people. They don't want to change. And uh, school is a very conservative system, so the, the change is the, so the change of the of the school system is always difficult. Whatever you want to do, um, but uh, but but we but we are making progress, and uh, there is more and more uh, NGOs and public institutions engaged. And in fact, uh, right now we are beginning the cooperation with the biggest. Uh, uh, Polish national institution, which is um, uh, uh, the Institute for Audiovisual um, something. Uh, I don't know how to translate it. Um, um, uh, Polish National Audiovisual Institute. That will be translation. And uh, we are co they, 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 they just built a big center uh, for media literacy in Warsaw, and they will be they, and, uh, and and they will be teaching like uh, thousands of kids. From all over the Poland in there, and they will be, and we are cooperating closely. So, so it's moving forward. Okay, thank you again for this wonderful presentation. An applause, please. Thank you. And after a short break, we'll go on with our next talk.